Gentlemen, today we are starting something new. We're starting a new topic, and the topic is going to be conveyor systems, all right? Conveyor systems. So what does it mean to convey something? To move it, very good. So we will have uh, conveyor systems in manufacturing, in uh, shipping, at airports, Okay, even the little people movers at airports. You guys ever been to BWI? Who's been to BWI? You ever been on those little people movers? You know, you're walking along and you get on that little conveyor belt and it makes you makes you seem like you're five times faster than you really are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was good. An escalator. Who's been on an escalator before? An escalator is a conveyor belt. It's used to move people up to the next floor. So every conveyor belt every conveyor system has specific characteristics so what you guys are going to do for the first part of this lesson is you are going to brainstorm together in your groups I've provided you a writing tablet a big writing tablet I suggest you kind of draw this in the landscape position so you can make it nice and big you are going to draw a conveyor belt system I have given you a textbook, which you can use as a reference tool. I have given you a computer, which you can use as a reference tool. In this shop right over here, I have tools that use the same kind of mechanics as a conveyor belt, meaning I have a belt stretched across two pulleys. One pulley is a drive pulley attached to a motor, and the other one is a free running or a driven pulley. So. What I would like you to do, as a group, is I would like you to draw me a conveyor belt system. Just to give you a little bit of help, I've put some terms on the board. So let's take a look at these terms because I would like to see these things in your drawing. We have a motor. That conveyor belt is not going to operate on its own. We have a drive shaft. We have the belt. The flat belt. We have a drive pulley. We have the driven pulley. We have a flat bed. A snub idler. Return idlers. Notice that's plural. A gearbox, which is also called a speed reducer. Your coupling between the motor and the pulley could either be a V belt or a chain. Now these are some of our vocabulary words from yesterday. And you have to have some, something to connect the V-belt or chain between the motor shaft and the drive shaft. That for the V-belt it would be a pulley. For the chain drive it would be a sprocket. So see, you get a choice. You get a choice of whether you're going to do a V-belt drive system or a chain drive system. So. Are there any questions about what this assignment is? You all need to work together. Somebody is going to have to roger up in your group and be the artist. The other ones are going to provide the information. All right? So, let's begin. Oh. Here's an example of a belt between two poles. One is connected to the He jumped over the board twice. Like, no two different plays. He, he said he's not allowed to hop over any player while going over the ball. Hey. This sort of helped. Yeah, 
I want to give you guys a little inspiration here. This inspiration would be this belt sander. Here I've got a flat, wide belt going across a flat bed. Flat bed. It's stretched between two pulleys. One pulley is a drive pulley that's attached to a motor. The motor provides the drive for the flat belt. The other belt is attached to a driven pulley. That driven pulley, it moves all on its own. And I provide a little bit of tension between the pulleys and I have movement. This is an example of what I'm talking about. This is an example of a conveyor. Now, it doesn't move anything, but the idea, the principle, is still the same. A wide, flat belt stretched between two pulleys riding on a flat bed. Do you understand? Okay, so now, go back and draw me a conveyor system. This was the same. Oh. So, so you, yeah, like, so you have like a motor yeah. that will hook to the gearbox so yeah. it reduces the speed. That's just my guess. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and comes up through the snub idler and then goes to the driven pulley. And the snub idler keeps more of the belt in contact with the drive pulley. Now there were other type of idlers. Those were called return idlers. And what happens is down here, you've got gravity taking over. So gravity makes the belt droop. So what we've got is we've got these things called return idlers that we can put every so often to keep the belt up in place, to keep it from drooping down because of gravity. Yes? Would it like go underneath those or stay on top of um, the, uh, the return idlers go under the belt. So the belt is on top of the idlers to keep it from drooping down. Right? Kind of takes out some of the slack. Now we have to have some slack in a belt, but we don't want a lot of slack in a belt. So again, the snub idler keeps that belt tight against the drive pulley, and then the return idlers just keep that belt from slacking down due to gravity. Again, when you guys are done, I want you to uh, hang it up on the wall. If you need some tape or something, grab some tape. Uh, yeah, you might want to change the orientation of that, okay? All right. Now what I want you guys to do is I want you to get up and look at everybody's drawing and and we need to figure out who has the best drawing. So you guys go around, take a look at it, and determine who's got the best drawing, who has everything represented, who has every piece, every part represented. We don't know about the player Alright, I'm going to go through the different parts as if I were drawing them. Alright, and we'll compare what I've got with what you've done. First of all, I need a flat bed. So, I'm just going to start with a flat bed. Flat bed. Now, I'm going to start with two pulleys. There's a pulley. There's a pulley. My belt has to stretch from pulley to pulley across the flat bed. Now, I want my flat belt to be snub against, we're going to call this my drive. So I'm going to have something called a snub idler. I'm going to put this snub idler right here. In order to keep the belt from drooping down due to gravity, I'm going to have a couple more idlers, which are just little free-running pulleys that are called return idlers. So now, I've got my belt. Ow. Hurt ear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So here's my belt. You can see my flatbed. You can see my pulleys. Now again, what determines whether one's a drive pulley or driven pulley is all where drive, my yeah. motor is attached. So, yeah. here's my shaft. I gotta have a way of turning this shaft to turn this belt. So I'm gonna have a motor. Okay, here's my motor. Question? Do you have two motors? Uh-uh. That's why they have a drive. No. Mm. Um, my motor is going to be attached to a gearbox. And usually the shaft of the motor is going to go right into the gearbox. The gearbox is going to have the shaft coming out. And there's going to be some sort of sprocket on here. We're going to need to put a sprocket on my drive pulley, the shaft of my drive pulley. And I simply have a chain that goes between the two sprockets. So my motor is pr providing the drive. It goes to a gearbox so that I can slow it down because a conveyor belt is only supposed to go as fast as a man can walk. The gearbox reduces the speed of the motor. I have my chain and sprocket to provide the drive to my drive pulley. My drive pulley moves the belt. It's all by friction. All right? And this is where we are at, and we are going to learn about conveyor systems and go into it much more detail. Now, this little exercise, I could have just spit it out and I could have just given you all this information, but I think it'll, it'll stay, you'll retain it if you have to work for it a little bit. So this was a good exercise. I have a handout for you that will help it out.